and welcome to Forward, Mississippi State's television show exclusively for the College of Education. I'm Camille Karskadden, the Communications Specialist for the College, and today on the show we have Dr. Hallie Smith, who is the, an Assistant Professor and the Program Coordinator for the College's new ABA program. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. So you are a relatively new faculty for the college, correct? Yes, that's correct. Well, why don't we just start off with you telling us about yourself? Sure. Um, so, yeah, so I am the program coordinator for our new Applied Behavior Analysis or ABA program here at Mississippi State. Um, and I'm also an assistant professor in that program. Um, a little brief background on me is I actually did graduate from Mississippi State back in 2017. Um, so I graduated um, from the PhD program in the school psychology program here um, at Mississippi State. And then upon Completing my training here, I went on um, to get more training in my internship and my postdoctoral fellowship um, at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine and Kennedy Krieger Institute in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, so while I was there, um, I did work on the applied behavior analysis track. Um, so I worked primarily in the pediatric feeding disorders program and the severe behavior unit there. Um, so after I finished up my training, um, I worked as a licensed psychologist there and a BCBA or a board certified behavior analyst um, in the pediatric feeding disorders program. So my role there was primary clinical um, in nature, um, but I did also do some supervision and a little bit of research. So um, when I was contacted um, about this position, um, I was extremely excited. Um, Mississippi State always felt like home for me as a student, um, and I had such a wonderful experience here um, in my school psychology program that it was a really easy decision to come back. So I'm really excited to be here and really excited about this opportunity um, that the university has to start this, this new program here. That's fantastic. Okay. So before we talk about the new program, um, can you explain a little bit what applied behavior analysis is? Yeah, absolutely. So applied behavior analysis is really the science based on the use of learning principles to um, really improve other people's lives. So essentially, it boils down to the use of applied evidence-based principles and procedures and learning to change socially significant behaviors of other people. Um, so it's really about focusing on modifying different aspects of someone's environment um, in order to make that change in their behavior. Um, with ABA, we're also focusing on the data. So we're always um, monitoring that specific behavior we're trying to change for that individual to make sure that the, the things that we're doing are actually effective, that we're actually making that behavior change and things are working and goals are being met. Um, and really ABA can, can be used to anybody and everybody. Um, so we can use applied behavior analytic strategies to address and change um, behaviors that are going on with different children, with adults, individuals who um, are typically developing, but also individuals who might have um, different developmental or intellectual disabilities. Okay, and you did just touch on it, but um, who, what, what person would be ideal for ABA? It's a really common assumption that ABA is really only appropriate for really small children um, or individuals with autism or any type of learning disability, but that's just not true. Although ABA is the like number one recommended treatment strategy for children with autism and for children with disabilities, um, we can really use it for a wide variety of presentations. So yes, your one-year-old would be a perfect candidate <laughs> for um, behavior analytics services. Absolutely. Okay. And talk about um, our new program for a little bit. Yeah, so um, our program um, really encompasses coursework and training um, across both the undergraduate and the graduate level. Um, so we have um, our graduate program is obviously our master's degree in applied behavior analysis, um, which is a 31 credit hour master's program. Um, we also have the option of a certificate program. So this would be for individuals who already have a master's degree in a related field, but want to now move into behavior analysis. So they're able to come into our program um, and take just those ABA courses without having to start all over with a brand new master's degree. Um, at the undergraduate level, um, we have a minor in ABA that is um, open to any major that someone might have in the university. So our undergraduate minor is a 15 credit hour kind of course sequence um, that can be taken um, across time. 
And then our, our third option is, is our standalone registered behavior technician course or an RBT course. Um, so this is one three credit hour course that we offer. Um, and, and completion of that course allows for certification at the entry level credentialing position in the field of behavior analysis. Um, I will also add our coursework at all of those levels I just mentioned is available um, both here at the Startville campus face to face, um, but also online um, as well. So just providing that flexibility and those options um, for for our students. So. We're really excited to have our first cohort. Um, so our program just started this fall. Um, so our first cohort right now has 15 students in it. Um, about half of them are taking all of the courses online and the other half are coming to campus and taking the courses face to face. So um, it's it's been really exciting to kind of watch this start growing already um, just within this first semester that we've, we've gotten started. That's wonderful. And is there any real difference in the online program and the face to face program? So not really. Um, we actually are um, offering all of our online students the opportunity to join synchronously to our face-to-face -face sections of the course. So um, we have been really grateful to be in one of the updated technology classrooms for all of our courses. So our online section of our course has actually consistently been streaming in um, to the classroom. And that's actually worked really, really well. It almost feels like they're right there with us. Um, so it's it's really nice that we have we have that ability. So there's really no no difference really there. And is this I know um, all of our programs in counseling ed psych are accredited. So is that the same with the ABA program? It is. Um, yes, in addition to the standard credentialing um, that we have in, in the department in the college, um, specifically as it relates to behavior analysis, we have an accrediting body in our field, um, the Association for Behavior Analysis International, or ABAI. Um, we use a lot of acronyms in this field, if you haven't noticed already, but um, ABAI really regulates the education and training of behavior analysis. Um, and so they've recognized our programs here at Mississippi State and our coursework as what they call a verified course sequence, or a VCS. What this really means is that when um, any student who has completed degrees or coursework from our program goes to apply to take the licensure exam for their credential, all they'll have to do is say that they graduated from our program and the the board has already approved all of our classes. So, so basically we kind of did the work on the front end to get all of our coursework approved. So they know that a student coming from our program has had you know, the quality and the standard of, of coursework and, and exposure to the material that they needed to become, become a good behavior analyst. Great. And um, who would this program really be ideal for? So honestly, anybody. We have a really good mix right now in our program of some students who are coming straight from undergrad um, who are, you know, full-time students. We have a really large portion, I would say over half of our students um, are working professionals who have finished undergrad, you know, several years ago, maybe, you know, and they're working full-time as special education teachers in the schools, or they're working as RBTs, which is that entry-level position in behavior analysis. Um, so they're working potentially 40 plus hour weeks and then taking their courses on top of it. So um, we again have that variety and, and as an instructor in this program, I like that because we have different levels in the classroom and I feel like it allows the students to really also learn from each other's experiences um, that they're sharing about in, in class. So. Our courses are also, um, you know, at the graduate level, all of our courses are seminar style. So our classes meet once a week for three hours. And um, we've kind of designed it to where all of our courses are actually offered in the evenings from about from 6 to 8.50, um, again, to cater to that working professional. And talk to me a little bit. You mentioned sort of the different levels of ABA. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah. So the certifications that go along with behavior analysis are again those three different levels. So, so the first one um, again is the entry level position. That's the registered behavior technician or an RBT. Um, so for, for that certification, you have to have a high school diploma. You had to have taken um, an approved RBT course um, and then you would take your RBT exam. So the RBT works under the supervision of a board certified behavior analyst or a BCBA. Um, the second tier um, is actually a board certified assistant behavior analyst, so a BCABA, um, and someone 
that works in that role um, would have completed um, appropriate undergraduate work. So you have to have your bachelor's degree um, and you have to have a set of courses um, in behavior analysis in order to get that certification. And so um, completion of our minor in ABA here at Mississippi State does allow for students to apply for that certification, um, the BCABA. And then finally, the highest level that we have is the BCBA, which is the Board Certified Behavior Analyst. Um, that is the 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 top credential that you need um, to be an independent practitioner in the field of ABA. Um, and so obviously here, that would mean completion of our master's program in ABA. Great. And um, what are the requirements to enroll in this new program? So we do have um, an application process. We admit students in a, in a cohort kind of mentality. So we only accept students in the fall semester. Um, and those students will kind of take those courses um, as we've structured and planned them. Um, so we, in our application process, obviously you have to have an undergraduate degree. It doesn't necessarily have to be in a related field. Um, the majority of people who are interested in behavior analysis happen to have degrees in um, elementary education, special education, psychology, educational psychology, um, but it's not necessarily a requirement. Um, you do have to write um, a statement of purpose for us, um, and then you need three references who can um, write some strong letters of recommendation for you. So, um, you know, at this point, while we're excited about people who are applying who do have some experiences working with the populations that are relevant to this field, it's by no means a requirement. Um, so, so that's um, our, a little bit about our application process. And um, how do undergraduates fit in? I know you mentioned a minor. Yes. So undergraduates definitely um, fit in with the minor courses. So we have five courses, it's a 15 credit hour minor that's open again to any major at the university. You don't have to be um, specifically affiliated with psychology or ed psych or anything like that. Um, and for that, you know, we're kind of hooking in with the student's primary advisor um, to provide specific advisement on those ABA courses. Um, and, you know, I'm also more than happy as, as people are like the information is trickling out, people are reaching out um, to their advisors or to their specific professors and then they're kind of referring them to me. So um, I have been chatting with a lot of undergrads since the semester started, just like, hey, let me let me talk to you about behavior analysis. You know, your advisor mentioned that you were interested in X, Y, Z. Let's talk about this a little bit more, see if this is something you'd be interested in. So um, undergrads are definitely a huge part of our program. Um, you know, obviously the master's program is is more well advertised and things like that. Um, but we're really hoping to see like our undergraduate um, numbers grow as we continue um, to, to be around. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to come on to the show today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. For more information about the College of Education, visit educ.msstate.edu.